Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As always my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to work on either Snowflake 1 or 2 depending on the video. So what we have here is one pattern has two beautiful um, snowflakes here. You can stiffen those up and this is a snowflake number 2 that you see here with the beautiful points. Just needs a little bit of stiff, stiffener and then you can hang it up. And then also we have snowflake number 1 just like you see it's a little more complex. So what we're going to do in today's video is either do 1 or 2. So depending on which video you're looking at is the one that we're gonna get involved with today. So this is snowflake one and snowflake number two. Let's begin working on this pattern together. So this pattern requires us to use Peyton's Grace and we're gonna be using a small crochet hook today of 2.75 millimeter, a US 7. And what we have is the diagrams that are available on page number two. You have the stitch key to be able to follow and what we're going to do is just follow these around. They're not very complex as far as like the number of rounds. Uh, for example, you only see that there's uh, four rounds here on snowflake number two and on number one there's actually five. So either one is no big deal and we're gonna be getting started right now. So let's move along to snowflake number two. Snowflake number two has only four rounds. It's actually pretty quicker than it is for snowflake one and we're gonna be building this out and then have these beautiful uh, pieces. So when we go to look at it from a finished point of view this is what we're gonna look at it. So you can stiffen it up with a stiffener if you wish and ultimately it's gonna look awesome. So without further ado let's get started on snowflake number two. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot and we're gonna chain a total of seven. We have a large interior ring for this one. So we're gonna just chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and insert this into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through. When you begin round number one just put the straggler around the center of the ring and then it will get stuck up underneath and let's begin round number one. So in round number one we're going to start off with this and we're gonna do 12 sets of trebles two together. So in order to do the first set we have to chain four to begin. So one, two, three and four and we wanna treble into the same ring. So wrapping the hook twice to treble and then going into the ring pull through and then pull through two and two and two all the way back to the top. To separate the trebles we're going, the groups of trebles you're gonna chain two and now we're officially gonna do the real treble two together. So to do that wrap the hook twice and going into the center of the ring pull through, pull through two and two but do not finish it. Okay so leave it so that there's two on there. So wrap twice again and into the same one pull through, pull through two and two and now pull through all three of the loops. And those are treble two together and to separate them chain two and I'll show you one more time and then I'll leave the rest for you. So wrapping the hook twice into the center of the ring, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. So don't finish it. Wrap twice into the center, pull through, pull through two and two and so then you see three loops, pull through all three and then chain two to move on. So I need you to see that there's gonna be 12 of these groups of two going all the way around for round number one. So please do that and meet me back here in just a moment. So as I'm continuing around I'm running out of space in my center hole. So because I'm going around the space I can just move things out of the way. So just make sure you chain two and then just continuing and to shove as many treble uh, groups in there as you can. So there should be 12 groups of trebles and with chain two that separates them out. And it will make a nice tight um, center when you go to do that. I'm gonna do one more and then I'll count. So I'm the kind of person that I don't necessarily count as I'm going around on this sort of thing. I just look at the groups of two and just feel like when it's enough I just count it. Um, I'm kind of lazy that way. So let's count out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Look at that eh? That's a complete fluke. So chain two and just join it to the beginning treble that you started with and then that concludes off round number one. So it's pretty fun. So let's move on to round number two. So in round number two each of these chain two spaces are in play for the exact same thing. So let's get over there first. So let's slip stitch to the chain two space and then what I want to do then is that I want to um, begin and um, I want to chain one and I'm gonna single crochet in that same spot. Then I'm gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and then next chain two space I'm going to single crochet. And then one, two, three, four, five. 
and then single crochet. So I want you to do that all the way around for round number two. So finishing off round number two, I'm going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then just simply just attach it to the first single crochet I started with. And then we're gonna move up then to round number three. So right where I am in round number three, I'm just gonna slip stitch to the next chain five space to start. And then I'm immediately gonna chain one and single crochet in the same space. Now I found myself getting confused on this round. So you gotta make sure you're keeping an eye on your space counts. So now that I've single crocheted there, I'm gonna chain 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And I'm gonna come back into that same space in single crochet. Now here's what I need to do. This is what was confusing me. Is that I need to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Single crochet into the next chain five space. And chain five again. So one, two, three, four, five. And jump to the next space that's available to you. Like that. So it'll appear that you have two chain five spaces in between these spokes. So right where I am right now, I'm immediately gonna chain uh, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then single crochet back into that same spot. And I'll show you one more time. So you're gonna chain 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then single crochet into the chain 5 space. And then chain 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five and then single crochet there. So okay so that's what I want you to do all the way around for round number three and then round number four. I don't even know if I have enough yarn for round number four but we're gonna get you started and I just hope for the best. So I'm coming all the way around and I said that already that I was kind of like getting confused the very first time I did this. So where I get confused is that after I do my two chains here I figured that this is so close that I'm almost done but I'm not. So I still have to chain my, my 12 here. Remember there's six spokes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And single crochet back into that same spot. It's really kind of misleading to think about it. Um, so now that I have to chain five, so one, two, three, four, five. I'm going into the last space that exists here, but I'm not done yet. I still have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I just join it to the beginning one here. And I'm just going to, actually my last one here, I'm not gonna chain five. So let me just back this out for a second. I'm only gonna chain two, one and two, and then just double crochet into the beginning here. I know it makes sense in just a moment why I've done that because that's what it says in the pattern but there's a method to the madness. So you should be able to see six spokes at this point and each spoke now is really easy to do and we're gonna get started next. So now let's begin round number four, the final. So we're gonna just double crochet into the first chain 12 space six times. So one, two, three, four, and five, and six. And once you get your six there, we're gonna do uh, some pico work. So you need to chain two first. So go one, two, and then pinch. Three, four, five, and right where you pinched it, just move your thumb back and go into that chain and yarning over, pulling it through and through. And then chain two. So one, two and then start and double crochet going down that same spoke. Okay so this is going six down. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then right here this next chain five space I need you to single crochet, chain three, and then jump to the next space here in single crochet and that's where you're immediately going to start and just work your way up another spoke. So remember that it's gonna be six double crochet going up. So let's count. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then chain 
uh, do a pico. So you're gonna chain two. So one, two, but count it this way. Three, four, five. Move your thumb back and then pull through and through and then chain two to finish and then go six down. And all I just need you to do is do this completely all the way around. It's not hard to do. It's just a matter of just following through the procedure. So you're going six double crochet down and then once you're down at the bottom just jump to the next space and single crochet in. Chain three. So one, two, three and then jump to the next space and then just start double crocheting up. So you're just gonna do this all the way around and then when you get back all the way around let me take it to the other sample and then you can finish off for today. So all you're just gonna do is just continue all the way around and make sure that when you come down you still have to chain your three and then just join it with the slip stitch and then that's it. So then you're gonna turn it over and just take your tapestry needle and just weave it back and forth a total of three times and therefore it's good to go and you can use some fabric stiffener and stiffen this up and it's a really neat kind of concept. So it's a really kind of a fun little pattern to be able to follow and it's one of those that you can probably put into your head to remember so you can do multiples of these just in case you'd like to do a large size Christmas tree. So till next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.